Let's learn how to do functions in Imba. Functions in Imba are created using the def keyword followed by the name of the function. I'm going to create a function called create habit and it's going to return an object with name and this is going to represent a habit that I want to complete. So this will be exercise and then I'll have a property called done whether or not this habit has been completed. So I'll say false and let's call the function. So I'm going to do console.log first and then create habit call the function and we'll print out the output. Okay, we see our object, great. In Imba, instead of putting empty parentheses to call a function that has no parameters, you can use an exclamation point. Works the same as the empty parentheses. I just wanted you to be aware of that because you'll see it around in Imba code. But I'm gonna add some parameters to this. So let me put those back. And you put the parameters right after the function name. You don't need parentheses here. And I'm gonna have a parameter called name and then comma, a parameter called done. So instead of this string, I'll use name. And instead of this Boolean, I'll put done. And I want done to have a default value of false. Okay, let me save that. Oh, name is undefined. We got to pass in something. So I'll say clean up. All right, so now we have the value printing out and we can pass in the name and done as we like. Now I want to add one more item to the object here, which is going to be a created at timestamp. So I'm going to say const timestamp equals date dot now. And if you want, you can use exclamation point to call date.now if you like how that looks. And then I'm going to say created at time stamp. Okay, so we have one more property now in our object that gets outputted. An important thing to know about functions in Imba is that they use implicit returns. This means that the last executed line of the function is returned automatically. So you don't need the return keyword. So if I delete that, rerun this, Everything still executes just the same. This value gets returned back. Let's take a look at the compiled JavaScript output from this Imba function definition. So here's the actual JavaScript that it turns into. And you can see that it's basically the same. It's what you would have written in JavaScript. It inserted the return keyword for us. So I just always want you to keep in mind that the Imba code you write translates pretty directly into JavaScript. Okay, I'll delete that. And I want to create another function called pretty habit. Def pretty habit. This is going to take in a habit and it's going to return a nicer string representation of that habit instead of just printing out the object all the time. So we can say habit.name inside of a string. And I'm not putting the return keyword here because that the last line of the function always gets returned. Okay, let's put pretty habit around our habit. So pretty habit takes in a habit, create habit returns a habit. Now we just get the name of the habit printed out. But I also want to put a little checkbox thing at the beginning of the pretty habit. So I'm going to make another function called check and it's going to take in a habit and I'm putting that here interpolating it into the string. So let's make that function. We'll make a new function called check takes in a habit and we'll put if habit.done. If it's done I want to return a little checkbox thing like that. Otherwise if it's not done I want an empty checkbox like that. Now in JavaScript, you might put return here and return here to return these strings. But in Imba, if statements evaluate to a value, so you can return the entire if statement. But because of implicit returns, we don't even need to do that. We don't need a return statement at all, and this code will work. If we want to make this a little more compact, I can put then here, and I can move it onto one line. And you can even move the function body onto the same line as the function signature if, as long as you separate the function signature using the do keyword from the function body. So now we have a nice one line function. And I can do that with this one as well. And let's run this. We can see that the little checkbox shows up. If we make this uh, false, sorry, true, now it has an X. Cool. So not everybody's going to like compacting these functions into a single line like this, but I find it kind of useful. I like to move little utility functions out of the way if they're one line, make them more compact, but it's up to you how you want to handle that. Okay, to prepare for your challenge, I'm going to change this into an array of habits. So we'll say const my habits equals, and then we'll have an array, and I'll paste in a few items here, and let's make these different. So we'll say exercise, that one will be false, and this one will be eat healthy. Okay, now here's your challenge. Create a function called print habits. It's gonna take one parameter called 
habits, which is an array of habits. That'll be the my habits variable here. And the function should loop through each habit, log the habit to the console using our pretty habit function to make sure that the output looks pretty. Now I've already put a call to the print habits function here with my habits as the parameter. So all you have to do is define the print habits function above that, and then you can run the code, see if it works. Go ahead and pause the video now, and you can give that a try. Okay, here's how I would do it. We'll say def print habits. The parameter is called habits. In here, we're gonna have a loop for habit in habits, console.log, pretty habit, and in there, we're gonna put habit. So we've got a for loop going through each item of the array. Each item in turn is gonna be assigned to habit. We'll use pretty print and pass in habit, console.log the result of that, and let's see what we get. Let me open up the console, and we have a nice looking checklist of our habits.